very close, about one. I'm gonna raise it just a little bit more. Okay. Second cut seems so I'm lifting up a little bit so it's happening. You just gotta get a happy scent, happy deal in there. This has to be held down, but it's indexed with with your uh, your channels in your table saw. So these are just held on there with some little short screws, and yours will need to be different. But man, everything's got to be square and centered to start with. Okay. okay. Now what I'm doing here is I'm going to run this through the thing once just to make sure nothing's hanging up. See what happens is if, if you try to do it all in the one pass and the edge of the blade where there's no cutting surface bumps up against this. So what do you think? You think crack this a bit here. So you can, I'm letting that down until that fits in the grooves there. And I don't know if we're at the right depth or not. We're going to do a practice one or two. Okay, here's, here's the important thing. When you're setting this up to your table saw, hopefully your fence is square. And, and that's something you need to double check. The thing is, a lot of those lighter fences, this is built after a Beismeyer fence. And I mean, it, it, it is firm when it's there, but some of them, you know, they're real squirrely. Now, if everything in a perfect world, I put that on that fence. Man. There. 
See, I've got that square. That's your working surface right there. Now, see what's going on there? Now, all we've got to do is, and it probably going, you're going to need a master once you get a perfect one and then write pattern on it. And it's always good for me to visually have something there to look at. Okay. So we're going to, uh, we're gonna get ready. Now, of course, this is gonna be on the outside and the top is going to always have the small thing. So that means we're gonna start with the bottoms in there. And I'm just, I don't know this to be a fact. I'm just doing, I'm just figuring it in my head right now. Your first one will be right there. And it'll cut there. Then we do the next one. We go over and over and over. But always, let's think about this. I'm just going by this one. But the one that has the smaller tongue at the top is always going to go on the top, see? So that's one important thing. And I don't think there's a left and a right because if you take this one and you put it right over here, it will be there. So what I'm gonna do right now is, so we don't waste any more, got my practice piece here. Got my friend, Mr. Square. I don't like that, I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna see if that can can be made square. And I'm just going to go ahead, before I do anything, I'm going to run that across there one time. Now, you got a lot more exposed blade and everything there, but I, I do believe that, that you can keep your fingers out of that. Okay. If something goes wrong, you just get out of the way. You don't ever try to save the piece or, you know, This, you don't want it caulking or anything. But you're going to have to hold these cans here. All it's holding that is my hands. I mean, you know, you got to have some hand strength. It's going to be kind of important because if that rides up, your cut's not as deep. All I'm doing now is checking my depth. My depth needs to be the thickness of the lumber, which we've gone for three quarters. Now see, I'm a full sixteenth too too far there, but I understand that. See, is that good enough or not? This is your first test. Looks good to me. No, I'll look at what? it again. Here, hold the whole thing. See the light. I'm low, I, I overcorrected a little bit too much in my mind. Okay, just a little bit short. About less than a 64. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to raise that blade up just a little bit. I'm going to run that one again. I'm going to keep doing that until I got it the right depth. Oh, <laughs> 